Alright, hey fam, it's Jaeger here, bringing you another look at the Battle Royale game Frostfall. Now, in this video, I just want to talk a little bit more about the weapons that we have been teased with so far by the Frostfall game. And uh, again, most of these, this information is really just collected through the different social posts, and I'm just trying to bring it all together and start to get a little bit of an idea of what can we expect to see when Frostfall goes live. I really want to know your thoughts on everything from the weapon design to the names to what are going to be your thoughts on using some of these different weapons. And if you're planning on playing Frostfall, which you absolutely should, what weapon might you lean towards using in the game the most? Are you going to go more range, sniper, stealth, or close melee combat? Let me know in the comments after you check out my weapon breakdown here. If you want to see more about these, all you have to do is head over to frostfall.com or follow them over on Instagram, frostfallbr. Again, all credit goes to them. I haven't played the game yet. This is just my own personal take on what we can expect. So in this Battle Royale, you know, very uh, top-down version shooter, there's a lot that we can kind of take away from this trailer, and there's a number of different weapons. So let's start taking a look at each one of them. Now this glorious little weapon here, and this video comes right from the Instagram page as well too, which I think is pretty cool artwork that we see, but this is the Cinder Shot. This one here, uh, its lore is that it is more red magic driven, which I believe is relatable to fire, hence the kind of dragon design that we see to it. Uh, but it's a bit more volatile and explosive. So this has got a bit more of that kind of buckshot and widespread, as you saw in the video clip just before. We'll actually talk a little bit more about this later on in the video, but this one having more of a spread certainly gives that kind of wide coverage, but it does appear to be a little bit more of a short-range weapon rather than a long-range weapon. Uh, again, really great design and artwork to it, uh, and also a really nice idea that we have various types of range weapons. And here's the second one. This is the Borealis, whose lore says that it was designed pretty much specifically for the Basilisk female character in the game. This one is more of a long distance, high damage output weapon. Again, we'll look at this in some of the slow-mo captures from the trailer earlier, that you'll definitely see that this weapon appears to have more of a charge style usage and a very limited path, which means you pretty much have to be able to pull off the equivalent of a headshot using this weapon in the game. Although it's not first person, so headshots aren't really quite a thing, the accuracy of this weapon really does appear to need some skill to pull off the damage. Next up, we have the Vesper. Now, the Vesper, or possibly even Vespa, uh, right? This one here is uh, pretty much going to be, I think, your typical revolver, short-range uh, type of weapon. Uh, you're going to be able to pull off multiple shots, though, is my expectation, since it is designed more as a revolver. So I don't think this will be a charge usage. I think you'll probably have a couple of rounds to pull off. But will this be short, mid, or long-range weapon is the big question I have for the revolver Vespa. Now those two previous weapons, I believe were powered by the blue magic or the equivalent of kind of like ice damage since they uh, have the lore from the north. Now this one here happens to be the Void Reaper. Being that it's the first purple weapon that we've really seen so far in this video, I believe this purple magic is the equivalent of poison, uh, where it kind of seems to kind of come from in some of the back lore. But this is going to be more of a melee close combat weapon. And again, we'll look at this in just a moment in some of the slow motion trailer captures, that this does seem to have a pretty wide attack range versus, uh, again, narrow close combat. So an opportunity to maybe even deal damage to multiple enemies at once. Once. The fifth weapon in our lineup is Doc's Demise, which infamous story is Doc never actually knew its name. Now with this, this also appears to be our assault rifle by the breakdown of it. And looking again in our trailer breakdown, again we're going to get to this in just a minute, I know I keep teasing that, but we'll look at some of the difference between this and the Borealis. This one here is going to be a multi-clip weapon, so being able to pull off multiple shots before having to kind of recharge. Uh, and with that, though, one thing I noticed in the video is it does deal lower damage output. It does have a pretty fair range to it, but compared to the Borealis when it comes to rifles in the game, this is not going to be the powerhouse unless you can nail every single shot. Here we have Shrike the Boomerang. Now, this weapon also appears to be a range weapon, 
The big question that I have about Shrike is, will this be able to be used as a close combat melee weapon as well? Being that it is a blade, one would think you'd have the capability of doing it, but of course only time will tell when we actually get into the beta release of the game. Uh, but having a ranged weapon that doesn't have ammunition will certainly be an interesting twist compared to the rifles or even some of the other weapons that we have included in Frostfall. One of those other unique ranged weapons includes the Staff of Agon. Now this one here slangs mad fireballs as the lore says. But working with this again, how will these type of ranged weapons compare to those of the rifles that have ammunition or clips? These ones here, will we require some type of charge up? And what is their range and damage output when using maybe something here with the staff more magic than it is actual ammunition? Although every weapon does appear to be powered by some form of magic or crystals that power them, what's the difference in damage output when looking at more of a traditional spell cast versus that of an actual ammunition. Uh, and again, the big thing will be what is going to be the type of range and spread that these weapons come with over those of standard ammunition. Our last close quarter combat melee weapon here is the Dagger Frostbite. This one here by lore is it was actually crafted from a single broken shard of the frost, which is kind of the uh, apocalyptic wave that's taking apart the Land of Loon and actually closing around that ring within the game, being that it's a battle royale. The ring actually has a pretty nice lore background. I really appreciate that, but let's focus on this weapon. One thing to really pay attention in melee is, again, what's going to be the damage output, the widespread range of it, and are there going to be any type of charge attacks that come along with this or even the axe in the game? what's going to be the advantages and disadvantages to using range over melee weapons. Now this next one, I'm not exactly sure if it is a weapon. This is the Poison Vial Fizzy Doom, which said in lore that it was consumed and basically melted the person who drank it. So my question is, will this be a magic vial that you actually can cast to cause damage? And if so, will we see additional vials come in themed off of the red magic or the blue magic since poison apparently seems to be our purple magic in the game. Again, big question mark for me, how this will be used. Is it more of an enhancement, or does this actually become Frostfall's version of a grenade in the game? Really curious to see how this one pans out. Here in this slow-mo, it seems that we've got Doran the Fox in red against Murtaugh in gold, and it seems that Doran is firing the Cinder Shot shotgun equivalent, right, with that widespread range. Now, it seems a few of those bullets might actually miss. That's a big question mark for me. And Murtaugh is firing the AR, Doc's Demise. Again, you could notice that he's got that nice range and ammunition clip. In this one, we've got Blar actually going up against Monty. Monty firing the Staff of Agon, so you can see it's a pretty large spell blast, but it does seem that we do have some protection or resistance, possibly, as we notice this little protective ice shell around Blar for a few seconds, again, taking time to recharge. In this one, we do have Mariel, it appears, actually coming at Monty with what I believe is the dagger there in her hand. Now, working with that... Uh, you know, again, the big question is, is that a charge attack that she was able to come in with uh, and kind of deal a little bit of extra damage? Here we've got Blar using the Void Reaper Axe. Look at that widespread range that that weapon comes with. Again, big question is, will we be able to do damage to multiple enemies? We also have another character here, not exactly who it is down on the left, using the Staff of Agon, casting very long-distance fireball. And uh, Blar here, again, pulling out our revolver, right, uh, the Vesper, and getting some pretty decent range on it. Now, notice here, slow-mo, right? We've got Kivu using the Borealis, and did you notice how narrow that shot is? And you could even catch Shrike the Boomerang being chucked out here and kind of coming back through. So multiple ranged weapons attacking each other. Yet again, we've got our shotgun equivalent here, the Cinder Shot. We do have the AR Dox Demise, again, using a little bit more of that range. Noticing the difference, if you happen to notice, the Borealis Sniper did about 100 damage, 
Whereas if you're looking at the Doxtomize AR, we're only pulling off about 12 shots. But notice right here, we get a really good capture of it. You can see the icon for Doxtomize and how it does appear that we have ammunition ticking down. If you go back and take a look at the Borealis, you'll see that it's actually a single shot. Let's go ahead and pull that up one more time here pointing out the Borealis icon right there at the bottom, how after a shot, it does take a few seconds to recharge. So this is going to be a pretty interesting twist on how we use weapons in Frostfall, and I'm excited to see exactly what it brings us. Having weapons that both use ammunition, but some weapons that also recharge themselves over time, I think is actually a pretty nice twist here to the Battle Royale. I know we've seen some concepts like this uh, maybe adapted into other games, but I honestly believe that Frostfall not only has the weapons, but has a really great lore that goes along with it that makes every single thing we do in the game count for something. So I'm excited to get my hands on the beta release, hopefully in the not too distant future. Again, if you're here checking out some of the Frostfall content, do make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for more. I'm Jaeger and I'm signing out. Thank you.